So we're looking for the reaction, you know, basically the momentum uh, picked up by the rocket having thrown propellant out the nozzle. Now we're going to integrate equation two. We'll slap some integral signs on it. And we're going to integrate from VI initial to V final dV. And here we're going to assume, there's the big assumption, VE equals constant. We're always making assumptions in our math models. We have to be real careful to record what assumptions we're making so that we don't come to wrong conclusions. The ISP of the rocket might change as it's, say, moving through the atmosphere and going up to higher altitudes. So we can't always assume that the VE is constant. But in this case, if it's constant, we can take it out of the integral, bring it out in front, and just do the integral of dm over m. Now, you know when you integrate you know, x, dx over x, the answer is log of x, right? Natural log of x. So here we have dm over m. The answer is natural log of m. And we take log of m final minus log of m initial. And when you take the difference between logs, that's the same as dividing inside m final over m initial and taking the log of that whole thing. So that's just the rule so, uh, of dealing with logs. <clears throat> now, on the left, we have v final minus v initial. We'll, we can assume that the initial value is, is 0. And so uh, what we get is the delta v of our propulsion system that we've been talking about. And um, that is minus ve log of m final over m initial. You might wonder, well, what about this negative sign here? It bothers me. Well, it's going to be positive because m final is smaller than m initial, so the log of a number less than 1 will be negative. That negative will cancel this negative. We'll get a positive number. And this is one version of what's called the ideal rocket equation. Ideal meaning that you know, the, the uh, specific impulse is <coughs> constant. Things are very simple. Now, if we rearrange equation 4, we can get logarithm of m final over m initial equals, we'll divide the delta, we'll divide the delta, sorry, we'll divide the uh, VE into the delta V. And if I take, if I take this equation to the E, in other words, exponential of the left side, exponential of log m final over m initial, that'll give me m final over m initial, right? That'll give me this e to the log of x is x. On the right I have e to the minus delta v over ve, so it's exponential of the thing on the right. And now I can write m final equals m initial times exponent, which is this equation. Or if you want to write the opposite, we can divide exponential to the other side, and then 1 over e to the minus will be e upstairs to the plus. So we have m initial is m final times exponent to the plus delta v over ve. Of course the propellant used is just the difference between the initial and the final values. And so we can, um, I can substitute in, for example, in equation 8, if I plug in for m final, if I take this value and plug it in here, then I have uh, mi minus mi, right, times exponential of minus delta v, and I get equation 9. 1 minus exponential of minus. And by the way, I can do a similar thing with the other equation and have m final times exponential minus 1 and get equation 10. Okay, now we're going to include the concept of the uh, inertial mass fraction. And that means that there's some mass involved in the rocket that's not propellant and it's not payload. It's structure. There has to be something to, there has to be at least some tanks to hold onto the propellant. You need nozzles. And so you have all this hardware that is not in the category of payload 
uh, <coughs> or uh, propellant. And so the ratio uh, of this uh, inert mass, uh, which is usually structure, uh, to propellant plus inert, notice that payload is nowhere in this equation. Um, we take the payload off and just look at inert mass structure, more or less, divided by prop mass plus inert mass. And that's our mass fraction. So now we're getting a slightly more sophisticated model that takes into account that there's some mass involved that's not payload and not propellant. And you have to carry that mass in the real rocket, of course. Typical values range from uh, 0.05 to 0.1, or basically 5% to 10%, uh, depending very much on the system. These, these numbers can be uh, quite different from the values I'm giving here. But for an ordinary chemical rocket, uh, you don't usually see anything even as low as 0.05. You may see values bigger than 0.1. It's easy to put more structure on. It's hard to take it off. Okay? As we get more uh, advanced materials, this number can be brought to smaller levels, and we'll see that that would have a very important effect on, uh, on your launch vehicle design. <coughs>